This is the book of Hebrews, chapter 11. And verse 24, by faith, Moses, when he was come years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season, esteeming the reproach of Amashiach greater riches than the treasures in Egypt, for he had respect unto the recompense of the reward. And before I go any further, I'd like to give all praises, honor, and glory unto Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai Bahashim Dash, which is the Paleo Hebrew. For the one true name of the Heavenly Father being Yahweh and that of the Messiah being Yahweh Shai. Rakaha Kwadash simply meaning in the Holy Spirit, man. Which is what gives us the motivation to do these lessons, all right, and the wisdom and knowledge to be opened up and quickened unto this truth, man. All right. Coming to those names that I just mentioned, which is the Paleo Hebrew. The Lashmon Kodash, the original tongue, the t language used to speak all manner of life into existence, the language of the Most High, man, referred to in Israel today as the dead language, as it is that old, all right? And as it is written, Acts 4 and 12, there's no other name given among men whereby you must be saved. So the elect will find that name, man. The elect will return to this truth. And I'd like to give double honors unto the elders and the apostles at GMS Great Millstone. Who are the vessels in which Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai has raised up to deliver these truths in this last day, man? It's likely to deliver this truth in these last days. <laughs> Speaking quicker than I'm than my mind's going, man. But nonetheless, right? We've been given this knowledge through the spirit of Harvey Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. And he set up vessels to deliver this knowledge, man. And these vessels are raising up all throughout the earth, man. And with that, I'd like to give salutations unto all those of you who are returning, man, who are coming back to the fold, who are leaving off these heathen customs and these heathen names and returning to the 12 tribes of Israel, man. You so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, and all those of you who have been scattered throughout the four corners of the earth, whose seed line does go back to the 12 tribes of Israel who are suffering the curses just as you so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans are. All right? To you, I say Shalom. To those of you who are returning, man, because guess what? We have a very high chance that we are the prophets of old, man. And the reason I say that is as I just read here in the book of Hebrews, the 11th chapter, regarding Moses, Right? When did Moses receive these riches, man? And the riches I'm speaking of, let's read 26 again, esteeming the reproach of Amashiach greater riches than the treasures in Egypt. So Moses could have simply had the world at that time, man. As Pharaoh was the walking image of the Most High in the eyes of the Egyptian, that's what he was believed to be. And they were the ultimate power in the known world at that time, man. And Moses was likened unto his son, his stepson. So Moses could have had it all, man. But guess what? He threw it all away for what? The treasures in Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. For he had respect unto the recompense of his reward. Let me go ahead and grab another precept real quick. This is the book of Galatians. Chapter 5. And uh, going straight to the point. Verse... Uh, Selakia, not chapter 5, chapter 6 and verse um, 8. For he that soweth to the flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. Right. He that soweth to the flesh will reap corruption, man. But he that soweth of the spirit, which we, we all sow things of the flesh, right? We go to work day in and day out. You may have a little side project going at your house, whatever the case may be. Right. But at the end of the day, that reward is a corruptible reward that's going to be destroyed right along with this place. Man. 200 million thermonuclear missiles prophesied to hit America. There is no <laughs> nothing you're going to set up here that's going to endure that type of flame. Man. Right. But as we go on, but he that soweth of the spirit shall of the spirit reap life everlasting. And this is what Moses understood. Man. We are building up a spiritual bank account, if you will. All right. Riches in heaven, man. 
All right, and that's exactly what Moses had been given the spirit to do rather than what? To live as an Egyptian and live some wonderful life right in this world. So when is it that Moses received his reward, man? Let's go ahead and continue. <clears throat> well, actually, I'm going to just jump straight to the point. Well, we'll start at verse 32. It says, And what shall I say more? For the time would fail me to tell Gideon and of Barak and of Samson and of Jephthah of David also and Samuel and of the prophets who through faith subdued kingdoms wrought righteousness obtained promises stopped the mouths of lions quenched the violence of fire escaped the edge of the sword out of the weakness were made strong waxed valiantly in flight turned to the flight and the armies of the aliens Women received their dead, raised to life again, and others were tortured, not accepting deliverance, that they might obtain a better resurrection. All these people, man. And what did it say? Prophets, right? Who have all endured, man. What did Jeremiah say? He said, cursed is the man that brought my father good tidings upon my birth. Why? Because Jeremiah went through hell, man. He was strung upside down in a well, spit on, beaten. Right? And again, none of these none of these men received the promise, man. In fact, let me go ahead and jump uh jump further down, verse uh thirty nine. And all these having obtained a good report through faith received not the promise. They did not receive the promise because why? That promise all right, us being redeemed, us being delivered, right? That's going to take place right here on the planet Earth, man. You see, let me go ahead and grab a quick precept to further uh, expound upon that. But, you know, this isn't really what I wanted to get into. But, you know, we'll, we'll jump into it a little bit. This is the book of Thessalonians. Um, chapter 4 and verse... Thirteen, But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Yahweh died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Hamashiach will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with a voice of the archangel, and with the trumpet of God. So basically what happens, right? When you die, you give up the ghost. Your, your, your ghost, your spirit, goes to the heavenly father as it's written in the book of uh, Ecclesiastes, man. Right? Your body goes to the dirt, decomposes from whence it came, and your spirit returns to the heavenly father, man. You then rest. Right? And for those of you who are going to give up your lives in these last days, as some of us will, all right, what is it telling us, man, that you're going to be sleeping? And if that's the case for those now, then how much more are those of ancient times, right? When we go into the regeneration, it tells us that every third to fourth generation, right, that's when, he, that's, that's when we return, man. That's the circle of life, right? Well, the point being, right, when, when they sleep, verse uh, 16, it says, For the Lord himself shall des descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Hamashiach shall raise first. So those who are dead shall be risen, man. All right, you don't just die and you go straight to the kingdom of heaven like the Christian church will have you believe. Therefore, they didn't, there was no way they received the promises, man. They didn't go straight to the kingdom of heaven. Now, the question now is, have they been asleep all this time? Well, let's get some examples. Let's get some prophecy, man. 
This is the book of uh, Second Esdras, chapter two, and uh, we'll go to the main point, uh, verse sixteen. It says, and those that be dead will I raise up again from their places and bring them out of their graves, for I have known my name in Israel. Fear not, thou mother of the children, for I have chosen thee, saith the Lord. Right, so he's basically saying, right, is what, so what, he's going to actually, you're going to see, see zombies walking around? No, he's bringing us out of a dead state to a living state, man. Returning this knowledge to us, right? This is uh, the book of Proverbs 21 and 16, and it reads, The man that wandereth of understanding shall remain in the congregation of the dead, right? So these people around us, the people of the world, are the congregation of the dead, man. All right? But going on, it says, verse 18, For thy help will I send my servants Isaiah. It says Esau, but it's because it's the Greek transliteration. All right, the, or the uh, Hebrew copy to the Greek, and then the Greek copy to the English which is why it says Esau and Jeremy. Who's Jeremy? Jeremiah. So it's talking about the two prophets, Isaiah and Jeremiah, his servants, right? So Isaiah and Jeremiah, he said he's going to send these two prophets, man, for his help. That's how we're going to raise up out of this dead state. We're going to return, man. The Heavenly Father ain't going to come out of the clouds and start talking to you directly. He's going to stir up what? His servants, man. In other words, his prophets going on, after whose counsel I have sanctified and prepared for thee, 12 trees laden with diverse fruits. So these prophets would what? Stand their lot in the end of days, just as it was said to uh, Daniel. Let's go ahead and grab that precept. This is the book of Daniel, chapter 12 and verse 13. It says, but go thy way till the end be, for thou shalt rest. Hey, so he's telling Daniel what? He's going he's gonna to rest, man. He's going he's gonna to give up the ghost and he's going to rest. R.I.P., right? It says, and stand thy lot at the end of days. So at the end of days, Daniel would stand his lot, which is what? To prophesy, man. This is the book of Romans, chapter 8. And um, let me find the point here. Verse, uh, verse 16. The Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And uh, let me grab another another precept. First Corinthians fourteen and thirty-two. Yeah, and you see how these people get their understanding? They literally Google what does it mean. It says, 1 Corinthians 14 and, and 32. This is why you got to be reborn and, and really we got to relearn everything, man. Read the, read the Bible as though you haven't, all right? Because really it just, it says what it says, man. It's that easy, all right? But only the elect would be able to do so. As we've been institutionalized and drug out too far in this world, man. But as it reads, and the spirits of the prophets are subject to the prophets, right? So these prophets, man... <laughs> That's their role. That's their lot is to is to prophesy, to be the servants of Yahweh, Bahashim Yahweh Shai, man. All right. And so, yes, these prophets, all these great men in the scriptures are here today. And in these times, they are finally going to receive their reward, man. So, Lord willing, we endure and be those men because we must endure to the end in order to receive that salvation, man. Right? This is what's expected, man. Salvation. This is the book of Jeremiah, chapter 29 and verse 11, and it reads, For I know thy thoughts that I think towards you, saith Yahweh, thoughts of peace and not evil, to give you an expected end. Right? His thoughts towards us are peace, not evil, man. This is an expected end. Why is it expected? Well, this is Malachi 3 and 6, and it reads, For I am Yahweh. When you see the word Lord in all caps right there, it goes to his true name, meaning Yahweh. That's what that word would be there in the original scriptures. If you grab it in the uh, Torah, right, it's going to actually read the, the, the characters of Yahweh. 
going on. It says, I change not. So he's the most high, meaning he don't change his mind, man. He ain't like a man that's going to wishy-washy back and forth to and fro, wondering if he chose the right thing or not. He's the most high. Point blank, period. Enough, ex enough said, man. It says, therefore, ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. So due to the fact that he is the most high and does not change his mind, he has not consumed the Israelites, man. He has given us particular promises, man. And therefore, we expect those promises to be fulfilled. Now, the question is whether or not we are those men. And that's why we must stay on our toes, man. That's why we must endure so we could solidify that we are those men. This is Revelation 2 and 25. It says, but that which ye have hold fast till I come. So this knowledge, this wisdom, right? The the work that we've done and the, and the wisdom that we've accumulated during it, during this grace period, right? hold fast why because it, going on verse 26 and he that overcometh and keepeth my works unto the end to him will i give power over the nations because we must hold on to it until the end man until what until the end until the coming of yahweh shai until that day as we read that he's gonna come from heaven with a shout man and raise us up and those of us who during this dark time have given up the ghost man because that is part of prophecy the abomination of desolation, man. Esau putting his hands upon the upon the, the Israelites, man. The elect of the church. You see? And why would they be putting hands upon them? What are they going to be doing? They're going to be standing their lot at the end of days, man. This is the book of Job, chapter 19. And verse 26. And it reads, And though... After my skin, worms destroy this body, right? So what happens when you die, man? Let's go ahead and go up to verse 25. It says, For I know that my Redeemer liveth, right? His Redeemer. Who's our Redeemer, man? Yahweh Yahu Shai. It says, And that he shall stand at the later day upon the earth. Wait, so Job is prophesying, man. Going on, verse 26. And though... After my skin, worms destroy this body. All of Job's righteousness, man. When did when did Yahweh Shai deliver him? Well, we know the story how he got you know blessed, you know, and, and delivered from that particular situation. But when was he given the kingdom, man? When was he given the the, the promises, right? He was not, which is why he says what. And though after my skin, worms destroy this body, he wasn't going to be alive when Yahweh Shai came during that life of being Job. That's why it says there's no remembrance of the former things. It's appointed for all men to live and die once, man. Job lived and died. Nonetheless, his spirit is still here, man. Or has returned, in other words. Let's continue. And though after my skin worms destroy this body, so again, he died, right? Yet in my flesh shall I see God. Wait, in your spirit though, right? No, he said in my flesh, man. In my flesh I shall see God, whom... I shall see for myself, and mine eyes shall behold, and not another. Though my reins be consumed within me. So because your though your flesh is gone, guess what? It's still you, man. It's still your spirit. The Heavenly Father doesn't just do away with spirits. And he for damn sure isn't going to send you somewhere where you just, your spirit burns, as your spirit is made of fire anyway, man. Christianity is just completely bugged out, man. This is the book of Hebrews chapter 1 and verse 10. It says, And thou, Lord, in the beginning hast laid the foundation of the earth, and the heavens are the works of thine hands. They shall perish, but thou remainest, and they all shall wax old as doeth a garment. So just like your clothes, right? You buy a you buy a shirt, the shirt gets old, you throw the shirt away, you then put on a new shirt, man. It's a cycle. That's likened unto us, man. Going on, it says, But thou art the same, and thy years shall not fail. So it continues, man. The cycle of life. And now we're living in a day where all these vessels out here, Hey, some of them are the prophets, man, and some of them are the complete contrary. Revelation 1 and 7, Behold, he cometh with the clouds, and every eye shall see him. And they also which pierced him, aren't they dead? 
those that pierced Yahweh Shai, those that crucified Yahweh Shai, those Romans, where are they? They're, they're living in a time capsule somewhere? No. These same spirits will be brought back, man, to receive <laughs> a heavy, a heavy atonement for what they did to Yahweh Shai, man. And what did, what did the Israelites say to Pontius Pilate? Let his blood be upon our hands and the hands of our children's children. Well, guess what? You're going to get exactly what you wanted, man. And I hope to the Most High that I am not one of those children's children, that I am not one of those forefathers which said that, man. Because again, we're living in a day where you were brought here either because you are a man of the Lord or the complete contrary, man. And I, for one, want to receive the promises, man. Lord willing, I was grinding it out and doing what I needed to do in those days and not selling out and kissing Esau's feet, man. This is all the kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him, even so I'm on. Going back to 2 Ezra's chapter 6, uh, 16. And verse 17, which 16 is a prophecy, prophecy about what? The last days, man. Right? Verse 14, it says, Behold, the plagues are sent and shall not return again until they come upon the earth. And verse 17, Woe is me! This is what Ezra is saying, man. Woe is me! Woe is me! Who will deliver me in those days? So as Ezra is seeing these prophecies, man, and he said, Who's going to deliver me in those days? Aren't you going to be already RIP, resting in peace? No, he's going to be here standing his lot at the end of days as a prophet, man. In fact, wasn't it told that John the Baptist was a prophet of old? That should be enough for you right there to, to close the lesson, man. <laughs> Christianity just has nothing to do with the scriptures, man. It says, um... Matthew 11 and 13 for all the prophets and the law prophesied until John and if ye will receive it this is Elias or in other words Elijah again you know from the Greek to the English that's why the words different which was for to come he that hath ears let him hear right so Elijah was John the Baptist man now wouldn't there be prophecy well just like the other prophecies we got about these ancient men coming back this is Micah chapter 4 and verse 5. And it reads, For all people will walk every one in the name of his God, and we and we will walk in the name of Yahweh, our God, forever and ever. In that day, saith the Lord, will I assemble her that halteth, and will and will gather her that afflicted. Uh Salaki, this is the right. The right. Uh, I meant to grab Malachi, man. Forgive me. This is the book of Malachi, chapter 4, and verse 5. And it reads, Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of Yahweh, and he shall turn the heart of the fathers to the children and the heart of the children to the fathers, lest I come and smite the earth with a curse. So, Yahweh Shai told us, man. John was... Elijah. And John didn't even know he was Elijah, man. Call la yim la yahweh by Shim Yahweh Shai, man. Let's go over to verse 1. For behold, the day cometh that shall burn as an oven, and all the proud, yet, yeah, and all that do wickedly shall be stubble. And the day that cometh shall burn them up, saith Yahweh of armies, that it shall leave them neither root nor branch. So wait a minute, when did that take place? Right? That, that dreadful day of the Lord. Well, it's going to result in the destruction of the wicked, even though it be a dreadful day of the Lord, man. So when did this take place that they received a destruction? Hey, it's uh, for the interruption. But, um, Khan, when did this take place, man? When did when did the, the, the wicked be burnt up and root nor branch being left, meaning there will never be wickedness, wickedness again? When did that take place? It has not. So the day that Elijah came, right, pursuing to 70 AD, 
was prior to Rome besieging Jerusalem, man. So we had a small taste of what us being destroyed. And that's where we got cast off to all nations leading up into where we are today, man. The Americas. Well, now we're, we're approaching that great and dreadful day, man. So Elijah, John, that same spirit is here today, man. Or perhaps was and already stood his lot as things could get heavy any day now, man. So anyway, with that, I believe the point has been made. Lord willing, this is edifying. This is another lesson um, from the brother Gar out here in uh, Tucson, man. So with that being said, I'm going to give all praises, honor, and glory unto Yahweh by Shemiah Shai. Again, Lord willing, it was edifying. Until next time, I'm going to say Shalom.